Hey everybody, welcome to the lab today. I'm so happy you're joining us. My name is Kieran, and this month we're talking all about the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible. Now, you're gonna notice a few differences, but hey, that's okay. Make sure you tune in because it's gonna be a lot of fun. Now, this new month also comes with a brand new members. It says this, He made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He keeps every promise forever. Psalm 146, 6. What a good memory verse that is. And you know what? It actually reminds me of today's Bible story. It's all about how God created the world. Some people have different ideas about why God created everything and how we all came to be here. Well, let's take a look at today's story called God Created Everything, right at the very, very beginning of all things that were made. So let's take a look at our story. I'll see you soon. In the beginning, nothing existed except for God. God created the heavens and the earth. The earth had no shape and darkness covered the earth. The Spirit of God was there, hovering over the waters. God spoke, let there be light. What God said happened. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and he called the darkness night. Evening came, and then morning came. That was the first day. God spoke again. Let there be a space between the waters to separate them. What God said happened. He made a space between the water that was on the earth and the water above the earth. God called the space sky. Evening came, and then morning came. That was the second day. God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear. What God said happened. God called the dry land earth, and he called the gathered water seas. God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth make plants and trees with fruits and seeds. What God said happened. Plants and trees grew according to their kinds, and God saw that it was good. Evening came, and then morning came. That was the third day. Next, God placed lights in the sky. God created the sun to shine during the day and the moon and stars to shine at night. God gave us lights to shine on the earth to separate day from night and to help us track time in days and years. God saw that it was good. Evening came and then morning came. That was the fourth day. Next, God made creatures that move and swim in the water. He made birds to flap their wings and soar across the sky. God saw that it was good. God told the animals to multiply, and they filled the seas and the sky. Evening came and then morning came. That was the fifth day. Then God made more animals, livestock, creatures that crawl in wildlife, to live on the earth according to their kinds. When God said it, it happened, and God saw that all of it was good. Jesus is Lord over all of creation. The Son has always existed. The Bible says everything was created by Him and for Him, and He holds everything together. All of creation exists to bring God glory. Okay, so did you get the answer? Why did God create creation? It's because God made it for His glory and our good. Now the word glory, it's a big one. You may not understand it, but to give glory to someone means to say how awesome they are and to say, man, they're really great. And so God created it for his glory because no one in the whole world, in fact, nothing in the whole universe is as good as our God is. He is the only thing that is really and truly good. So God made creation for his glory, but he also made it for our good. You see these little peepers you got over in your head and maybe these lobes on the side of them? Those are for us to enjoy the world that God made them. So God made the world and he also gave us tools to see and enjoy the creation around us. Now, speaking of us, we've only gotten to day five of creation. So let's get back to it and see how God made you and me, how God made the first people. Let's take a look.
On the sixth day of creation, God made people. God said, let us make man in our own image. They will rule over the whole earth and all the creatures on the earth. So God created both male and female people in his image. God took dust from the ground and made a body. God breathed into the man and the man became alive. God planted a garden in the land of Eden and put the man there. God told the man to work in the garden and take care of it. God provided food from the trees for the man to eat. And God provided a river to water the garden. Then God said, you may eat from any of the trees in the garden, except for one. The garden had a tree in it called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God warned the man, if you eat from that tree, you will die. Then God said, it is not good for man to be alone. So God decided to make a helper for the man. God brought to the man the animals he had created, and the man gave names to all of the creatures. But none of the animals was a good helper for the man. Oh. So God made the man fall into a deep sleep. He took one of the man's ribs and created a woman. When the man saw the woman, he was very happy. This one, at last, he said, is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. The woman was a perfect helper for the man. She was his wife. The man's name was Adam, and his wife's name was Eve. God gave Adam and Eve good things. He put them in charge of the animals and provided everything they needed. God looked at everything he made, and it was very good. So on the seventh day of creation, God rested from his work. God created people in his own image and provides for everything he made. People are special because God made people to live forever in a relationship with him. Through his son, Jesus, we can have eternal life with God just as he planned. Remember, all of creation exists to give glory to God and so that we can enjoy it. And that includes us. We glorify God because we are made in the image of God. That's a big phrase. What it means is like, we are a reflection of God to other people. So when they look at us and when we look at other people, we can see that, hey, God is in them. Not because we look like God physically, but because we act like God, we behave like God. The way that we move and think and love, that is exactly like how God loves us. In fact, God loves us way even more than all of that. Now here's the thing, we weren't just made to reflect God because of who we are. We're actually meant to be in relationship with Him forever and ever and ever through His Son, Jesus. And so because of Jesus, we can be in relationship with God. And because of that, we can reflect Him even better because we're connected to Him just like a source, just like a battery almost that powers us as we go forward. So we have a challenge for you. Take this next week and we want you to think and thank God for the things around you, the things that you see, the things that you hear, the things that you feel, whatever it is, because it's all been made to give God glory. So let's give back to him. Let's thank God for what he's made. And hey, you know what? While you're at it, why don't you thank God for making you too? Would you join me as we pray? God, thank you so much for making all of creation the way that you did. And thank you for making us. God, we see as we understand Genesis, the story, of the first people that you made us to show who you are to the world around us. And you made all of the world so we could live glory back to you and so that we could enjoy it. So Father, thank you for the world around us and thank you for the life that we have to live. God, today and for tomorrow and the next day and next day and next day and all the other tomorrows, I ask that you would help me to understand how to live in a way that glorifies you, that shows how awesome you are. So God, thank you for this day, and it's in your name we pray, amen. Hey, thanks so much for joining us as we talk about Genesis. We're so excited that you're joining us as we learn more about it this month. And hey, be sure you check around because we have a discussion question coming up later today, as well as a worship team. So make sure you get up and get ready to dance your pants off. Don't actually, but you know, dance around. 
have fun, be safe. We'll see you next time. And thanks for coming with us. Later. Hi there, I'm Pastor Kevin. It's time for questions from kids. Hunter from Park City, Utah asks, If God made us, who made God? Oh, Hunter, that is a fabulous question. And frankly, maybe more adults should reflect upon and ask that question too. You see, Hunter, God is eternal and he's omnipotent and he is sovereign and holy. Now, those are pretty big words, but what those words tell us is that God is, is set apart and God is not created, but he created all things through Jesus Christ, who is his son. We see this in Romans chapter one, Hunter, and also in, in John chapter one. And see, the right response for us being created beings is that we should worship and honor and adore and show reverence to him. Here's some question. What is your favorite part of creation? What does that created thing reveal about the creator? I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna. I just wanna.